Good evening, good evening. How's everybody doing the spiritual crypto encounters? Uh, also, Sister Psych, Positive Spiritualist. This is me, Abe Sias. Uh, how's everybody doing today? I'll put a little bit of anointing oil before I go into what I have to say. Uh, I would just want to say thank you to all who have tuned in to watch uh, that episode that me and my sister came out on. Uh, I really appreciate it. Whoever tuned in on This Woods is Haunted, Season 3, Episode 2. Uh, I want to talk about a lot of things, you know. Uh, what I want to talk about is uh, sometimes when people are not spiritually blessed or they haven't been through any spiritual struggles, uh, they wouldn't understand uh, or somebody like me, what I had to overcome and what I've overcome all throughout my life. Uh, they wouldn't understand because they haven't been there. Uh, I can give you many different things that they haven't been because everybody travels their own path, you know. So uh, they wouldn't know nothing about combat because I've been there in the front lines, you know, and I've dealt with that, what I have where I had to do when I was in the military. They wouldn't understand nothing about that because they've never been there. They never placed their life in the lines, you know, uh, in any kind of way uh, in which... You know, they would understand that. Just like they wouldn't understand that, uh, they don't want, they wouldn't understand, uh, the spiritual aspect of things because they don't want to believe in a higher power or, you know, they just want to ridicule people of what their, what their faith is or what they believe in, you know, vice versa, you know, uh, and that's all they know to do because they, they have never experienced nothing like that spiritually. Or like I said, they've never been in combat. You know, I was in combat when I was 19 years old. I can post pictures of when I was in combat. You know, I have my combat friends that I'm still affiliated with because we've been out there, done it, you know, uh, and we did it as a team, you know, to overcome the the obstacles and situations. Uh, what happened to me in Elms Grove is, is something that I experienced uh, that I kept to myself because, you know, being away from a lot of people that were by my side, they, everybody went a different direction. So it's something that I had to overcome uh, by myself. You know, it was directed at me. Uh, and that's how we grow spiritually. You know, when you're going through something uh, in some kind of way, uh, spiritually, it's something for you to know. You know, it's about what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you get placed in a situation when you're being spiritually attacked? By an unseen force. What are you going to do? Are you going to get scared? Or are you going to be... Are you going to get mad? You know? The, what are you going to do? Uh, for those who have understanding, understand it, we know exactly what to do. Because throughout life, throughout life, you know, we've been through our ob obstacles and we learn from them. You know, we learn every time you go through an obstacle that gets placed in your way, you learn from that situation, which makes you a stronger person in all kinds of ways. You know, uh, when I was being attacked by these unseen forces there on the Elmstrove Park, those are not the only things that happened to me. There's other things that happened to me health-wise. You know, I got real sick uh, where I had to go to the hospital and, you know, whether it was a blood clot that they found or the things that were happening to me, it was all dealing with the spiritual battle that I was going through. You know, whatever it was that was I was going through where I was fighting spiritually, it was literally trying to take me out out of this world, trying to finish, trying to finish my life. You know, for those that uh, the ridicule my experience or ridicule uh, the pictures that uh, that I place, they would understand. And I have an open challenge for these individuals. You know, I've been having an open challenge, and I believe one of those individuals that wants to take credit in some kind of way for where where I've been, what I've done. You know, it's trying to take credit for. For my experiences, you know, it has nothing to do with me. That individual is lying. He has nothing to do with what I shared in that story. He has nothing to do with that. He he has nothing to do with me. Uh, he's a he's a plain liar, and I'm calling him liar right now. As a matter of fact, he knows exactly exactly who he is. You know, he's a, he's a liar. Uh, I know uh, what happened is this in, this individual this individual. Thinks he's better than everybody else, right? So when somebody outdoes him, outdoes him in something, right? He wants to make fun of the individual. Like for example, me right now, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact that's, that's what he's doing. Uh, 
He's a breed of killing me because that's all he knows how to do. Every person that I've seen, he's got a pattern. Now I think he needs to change his name to Crying Wolf. Yeah, that's, that's him right there, Crying Wolf. And I, I'm just going to leave it that. For those who don't understand why I'm coming, how you doing, brother uh, Larry Batson? Uh, Larry Batson, yes, I'm talking about what's happening with me, you know, uh, I'm talking about certain obstacles that I've overcome through, I don't know if you, you've seen it, but this is, uh, on This Woods is Haunted, season three, episode two. That's my story there. Uh, you can catch it on Hulu. If you look under Terror in the Woods, that's the experience that I went through. But, uh, what's happening right now, brother Larry, is I'm being ridiculed by a certain podcaster. As a matter of fact, it's a, the same individual that I'm being ridiculed is the one that came out in episode one. You know, he's been, he's, he's, he's ridiculing me. Because of, of what I experienced, right? So he's, he's making fun of me and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I believe uh, the episode that I that I, that uh, me and my sister came out on was real good. You know, I don't know is it because I might have doubted his episode and blew it out of the water that he's upset about it. I'm not sure, but for some reason he's got something against me. You know, when when people try to make you choose like for example mr larry Benson, i i i respect you it's like uh if they're trying to get me to choose my friendship with you over them you know like trying to force me to to choose between a a, a friendship you know i don't think that's right uh I, i'm a neutral guy i'm a spiritual guy i've always been a spiritual person since i was a kid uh all the way up now so when somebody wants you to choose, like for example, whether it be you or whether it be Vic Kundov, Mr. Vic Kundov, when I was doing my, uh, when I share my stories, I was doing it in uh, this group's called Live Workers of the World, Live, Live Workers, Live Feeds, that's what I would do my works, and they pulled me from, from there because somebody heard about me and they pulled me into the cryptic community because they wanted me to share share my experience. So the first person that, that I got in contact with, Mr. Vic Kundov, he was, uh, he was the first person that I got in contact with him. And there was some people working under him. And one of the people that was working under him, he's not even, he, he's not even friends with Vic Kundov more. He, he wasn't friends with the, the person that came to investigate my area no more. And that's the same person that is coming up, up, up against me now. You know, the, the person did episode one, uh, Mr. Josh Turner. You know, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he calls himself Wolf. I call him Crying Wolf because he's always crying about something. And uh, he's always making fun of people, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, and that's what it's about. Uh, this this is why I'm making this video right now because I feel I have to defend myself, you know, against this this person. You know, I, I will say our name for him, but I don't want to say it, you know. But I know he would say it. You know, the, the, the first name that pops uh, in my head, you know, I, I won't say it because I, I don't want to go that route. So in saying that, yes, yeah, this when uh, somebody wants you to choose between friendships, you know, because me, I'm a spiritual guy. What is a spiritual person? A spiritual person, a sp somebody that's spiritual, that has uh, love in the heart, you know, cares about everything, everything in Mother Nature. They, they care about everybody in general. It doesn't matter what path we're on. It doesn't matter what color we are. It's about caring about everybody you know and that's me so when somebody gives me an ultimatum to choose friendships you know and i say no i'm neutral which means when i mean when i say a neutral is is that i i believe in everybody because no matter what path on somebody's on you know everybody's got a uh everybody's got time to change their ways right so that's why i do the spiritual works that i do and for some reason this guy you know uh He's, he's targeting me, you know, he's talking stuff about me. Uh, he's saying people to come my way, which I'm not worried about it, you know. I'm part of military, so I don't, I, I'm not worried whether he sends somebody physically, and I'm not worried if he sends somebody spiritually. But I'm making this video to call him out, to call him out on, on what he's doing, you know. Uh, and all these people that follow him, you know, and uh, uh, they, they laugh with him and all this stuff, the things that they be saying or whatever, you know, they're just as puppets, you know, puppets. Uh, basically, they'll, they'll do whatever he says, you know, because they're his followers, they're, they're puppets, you know. But he really doesn't have that many followers when you have, uh, fake profiles of, or bots, you know, as to raise up your numbers, you know. So, uh, that's what I see, you know. Um, uh, that's why I'm making this video right now. Uh, the reason I made my, my site private is because I was getting infiltrated, 
by them, by this, this fake, this, this fake people, fake bots, and they're infiltrating me in that manner. So I made it private. I got rid of a lot of friends, a lot of people off my friends list. Uh, I was in a lot of groups. So if I was still in your group, well, I don't consider you, uh, any kind of affiliation with them, you know, because I know you're a good person. So if I'm still within your groups, it's because I know that you're not part of what he does, but he likes mocking people. Uh, and that's kind of childish, you know, um, I've seen him mock so many people. Uh, and now I guess I'm next for him to mock me. He just don't know how hardcore I can be, you know, being prior military. I've seen it all, but when I see him, it's like, I see a weak person, a weak minded person, uh, kind of feel sorry for him, you know, uh, because I guess he has to say something funny in order for people to get some reaction because honestly, when he speaks, it don't have, it don't make no sense what he's saying. Uh, but when he has to, uh, talk bad about people, especially the people like me, I mean, I'm a combat veteran, I never really discharged from the military, I fought for my country. He can't say that, you know, he can't say that because he's never been in the military. Uh, you know, I don't serve my country. So he's coming up, up against a war hero, you know, it's like a war hero. I'm a, you know, consider myself a war hero because what I've been in the front lines, uh, it, it deserves some kind of respect, just like Mr. Larry. He deserves respect because of the, of the work he's done. And I respect him for, for everything he's done, uh, with the works he does or wherever does something in nature, you know, you, you figure you put in the work, you've been there, you've done it, you know, you deserve some kind of respect. But this guy, you don't want to respect nothing, you know. You don't want to respect nothing where, where there, wherever I've been. Where you don't want to ex respect the experience that I that I overcame because that's what I did. I actually overcame that experience. I relocated from the location that I was living. I relocated from there, and I moved. I got remarried. I happily, happily married, and I continue to work out. I stay active uh, because that's that's all I know. You know, is uh, to, is survival. Survival mode uh, is, is to continue to stay active, to stay busy. Whether we go, I go for a walk. Whether I uh, hit the weights, I continue to stay active. But the core of that, the core of all of who makes me who I am, is the love foundation that I kept, that I have within myself. I have the love foundation that I keep. Whether whatever this, whatever situation I go through, whether it be something physical. But whether it be something spiritual, the love foundation is always there, and that's my that's my core is a love foundation. But uh, that a certain individual doesn't understand that, you know, because he don't dwell on that. He don't dwell with a love foundation. I mean, everything that comes out of his mouth is nothing but negative stuff, you know. When uh, you say uh, talk bad about people, uh, and, and you do it at a constantly basis, uh, at a weekly basis, I man, you figure I had the COVID. You know, and I'm doing something positive. I'm working out, you know, because I know it's about survival. It wouldn't do nothing for ourselves. Then who's going to do it for us? You fear you go through an experience like COVID that not just you and your family get sick in which anything could have happened, you know, and we've lost some people in the field, whether it be spiritual or whether it be in the cryptid, however you want to call it. We've lost people in the field that were important, right? And they died of COVID. You fear you have something like that, that when you come out of a certain situation like that and you survive, that you're going to somewhat, it's going to wake you up from something and, and it's going to change you a certain way that you're going to change your path. You're going to change as an individual they are because it was an experience. But when you go back to doing the same thing that you were doing before, which is ridiculing people, and they just show your true character, who you really are. You know, and for those who follow you and agree with you, it's because y'all have the same character, you know, which is not good, not good at all. When you, when you have to, I understand you want to say say something to me, you know, we can, we can set it up in a platform. We can talk. I'm not afraid to talk. You know, I've talked to you before in the past when I was giving you spiritual advice. Um, I was telling you about forgiving. If you remember correctly, when we talked, uh, telling you about forgiving. I'm telling you about not holding anger or hatred in you when you was uh had so much anger towards uh Mr. Big Kundov. You had uh much anger towards Chris Cyrus. You had a lot of anger towards Michael Moran. Uh you had a lot of anger towards Marvin. 
And I can keep on naming because, you know, you, you put all these people on blast. And now I guess I'm the one on the shopping block. But like I said before, where I've been, people like you, is it don't bother me. I'm just making this video to let you know that you're not bothering me because of what I've been and I've done. You know, you can take that, that away from me. And the thing with the episode that, that I did, that's something that me and my sister did. You know, it happened that way. I make up uh, Mr. Uh, Michael made contact with me and we did it. So for you to take any kind of credit in any kind of way saying that you did this for me or did that for me, you, you didn't do nothing for me, bro. You never done nothing for more. If you would have done something, I could have respect you. I could have respect you. And I'm talking, I could have respect you if you maybe, maybe you would have done something for me, like maybe put me on your show. But you see, when you were under Vic kind of doing Vic kind of work, you didn't like me then either. Because Mondo told me, Mondo told me what, what's up with you since way back then. So I already knew that Josh Turner was not a trustworthy person because you and Mondo used to work together. He told me what, what you were about. He let me know about you. So. When you try to say you've done something for me, you never done nothing for me. Vic Kundal did something for me. I'll give him credit. Mr. Mondo, rest his, rest his soul. He's done something for me. But you never did nothing. But the only thing you ever did, bro, is if I remember correctly, when you came to Elms Grove, when your wife got spiritually attacked, that she couldn't go into the woods. You kept that a secret from Vic Kundal because you didn't tell him what happened to your, to your wife. Mr. Mondo told him about the experience that he had there at Elms, Elms Grove. And that's why I, I became the dude, Dog Man in Congress 53. But I never had your support. I've never had your support since day one. Because you don't, I don't even know how you made a show, a show about anything in spirit. Because if I remember correctly, when you came and I said, hey, did you prepare yourself? Did you, you know, do the cycle? There's, there's some, some negative energies here. You say you didn't believe in that. You say you didn't believe in none of that. That you were just there looking for, for cryptids. So when you did your, your episode, it's like, wait a moment. This ain't Mr. Josh Turner or Jachi. This ain't him. Uh, this ain't Crying Wolf. Uh, because you was never spiritual. So all of a sudden, when I see your episode, I didn't, you know, honestly, I didn't get to see it all the way because it didn't, it didn't, of what I know of you, like you said, you didn't believe in that. I know you said your wife was a clairvoyant or a medium, uh, and she got attacked right in the freaking woods. Uh, not, not even going into the woods. She had got attacked in the park. You see, for people who know when Vic Condor does a show, he sends people to come and investigate. Well, he sent, uh, Mr. Crying Wolf and his old lady, to come investigate during the day. I didn't know who they were, but they came, they, they, they contacted me and they said they were there that I could show them the location. I left my house, met in the park, and I told them they were ready. You know, I didn't even know their names, but I knew it was that, you know, didn't know their names then, but she didn't make it past the, the slide, past the, past the slides, because she got spiritually attacked right off the bat. So he, she had to go sit down in the, in the, in the, in the truck. So I took him into the woods and we searched the area. And when he come back, his wife is yelling at him. We need to go. We need to go. I cannot be here. Right. Well, that's what he kept away from Mick Kondo. He didn't tell him the truth that his wife got attacked spiritually. Then a couple of uh, week or two weeks later, I get a knock on my door early in the morning. And that's how I know Armando, brother Armando, rest his soul. He come and asked me a question. He had, this is what he asked me. He asked me, how can you be in two places at once? It's like, what do you mean? So who are you? He said, my name is Armando. I said, I'm one of Vic's, Vic Connell's people and I'm, I come and did the, the night recon, the night mission. This is a story he told me. He said that he had come by our house, you know, cause I didn't know who, who, who was coming. I didn't know Armando. At that point in time, uh, he said that he came past by the house and he see me there inside my house and he left and parked by this parking lot nearby the Woodlines by the creek. So 
as he's, as he's parked there by the wood line by the creek, he said that he's seen me coming out of the creek, standing by the woods, calling him by his name to go, go, to, go to me. Like basically I'm telling him to come to me, calling him by his name, but I didn't even know the guy. So he got scared and he took off and went by my house. And when he went by my house, he seen me there. So when he was telling me the story, he said, I'm going to tell Vic kind of the truth of what I experienced there, that there is something paranormal, that there is something demonic there because of what happened to me, whether it be a shapeshifter or demonic, it happened to me. But Mr. Turner didn't want to say, didn't say nothing about what happened to his old lady, to his wife. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why he's throwing errors at me because I know all this. So I'm, I'm living it out in the open now because I don't, I don't, just like he, he, uh, is talking bad about me. I'm living out in the open that he's a liar. And when he says that he support, supported me and when he got me on a show or something, he never supported, supported me. Armando told me this, that he didn't like the idea of me bringing the spiritual aspect out of it in there. And, uh, and, and brother Armando experienced something there in Elms Grove. That's when I did the open challenge. I did it for a reason. I wanted to see if Crime Wolf, Crime Roof Turner was going to take the open challenge. And I knew he wasn't going to take the open challenge. You know why? Because he already know there's something there. And I know for definitely for a fact that his wife wouldn't take that open challenge because she already got an attack once. So in saying that, I'm putting him out here in the open. You know, since he want to be talking bad about me and putting my name in, trying to give me a bad reputation. Well, I'm letting you know what, what the real deal is. For whoever wants to believe that or not, that's on y'all. But I know that's why he left Mr. Vic Kondov because he's a shady person. He's a shady person and every person he's trying to screw over or try to backstab, he's going to say bad things about him. If you don't believe me, one day he'll do it to you too. Uh, and, and that's all he is. You know, it's a big, it's a big, uh, a big out of shape crying wolf. So it's crying wolf. That's what he needs to name, <laughs> name so it's crying wolf. You know, when you have to, uh, do a little figuring to boost your ego up because you know you ain't about nothing. Uh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> you know, to me, that's, that, that, that's funny. He's, he's really never, I mean, you have to create a little figuring just to boost your ego up. You know, it's always about boosting ego with this guy. You know, he's, he's hot headed. His freaking head is inflated like a, like a big head. You know, he, he thinks he's this and that. He ain't about nothing. You know, that's why I laugh at him, you know, and, and, I, and I'm talking about this here on spiritual decrypt of the sides on my encounter, uh, on my, sh on my site. Cause he sent all these little puppets to come infiltrate and I got rid of everybody. I unfriended a lot of people affiliated with him. I left a lot of groups and he's, uh, he's upset because he cannot mess with me or try to take control of me in any kind of way because I'm not letting it happen. I'm sticking to who I am, a spiritual person, and I could be somebody else, but I choose not to, you know. But I just felt that I had to defend myself, you know, because at least me and my sister, we lived in this area where all those things were happening. They couldn't even be there. We lived there for 15 years. Uh, he couldn't even be there an hour, his wife couldn't even be in the park five minutes. So, who's, who's, who's been there? Who's done it? Who's, who's experienced it? It's been me, not you, Josh, or your old lady. Not, you haven't experienced nothing. And the, I mean, she did experience something when she got dropped, but that when her energy got drained, uh, she did experience that. And I believe maybe you, uh, you might have something upon you from when you went in there that it attaches to you. That's why you are the way you are. Because I'm, I noticed that big change on you because as far as I knew, you were doing works with Vic Kondov. And all of a sudden, after you came to visit me, you became a whole different person. You started making enemies, I guess, uh, or talking bad about people. I guess Vic was one of them, you know. You started changing the individual. And if you don't believe me, forever, view, view his videos. View his videos of all the people 
view his videos and you, you see all the people he talks bad stuff about, you know. He, he talk, talks dirty about the people, try to make the person look like like they're bad people, you know, and, and it's it's really him, you know, it's kinda like a it's like a like somebody pointing fingers, but they're the they're the ones that are the ones that are with the real problem, you know. And I think it's funny. And me, I'm just here on my side right now. I'm not, whether I share it or not on other sides, I don't know. But those kind of people, I used to deal with them back in the day, you know. And, and I think it's funny. That's why, to me, he's a crying wolf. He is a crying wolf because he's always crying about something. He's always saying that he's a victim of something. Um, uh, that, that he's a victim of something. He's always crying out he's a victim of something. That somebody is messing with him, but he don't see that he, he don't look at the things that he says. He don't look at things that it does because, you know, it brings him ratings. You know, if he can, uh, he can uh, talk stuff about somebody, it's going to bring him ratings. But uh, I think he's a liar. He's a hypocrite. Uh, and he, he's, he's just a liar. You know, he talks a lot of bad things about a lot of people like, uh, my brother Michael Moran. I know Brother Michael Moran, he's the type of person that he can only take so much. Me, I could take a lot, you know, being in the military. But him, he's short-tempered. So eventually, if Brother Michael says something to him, it's because he doesn't have enough of his of his uh, BS. So he told him something. Me, I'm, I've been known Brackham, um, Brother Michael Moran for a long time. He's never said nothing negative to me. Matter of fact, I visited him. I went to go visit him. He's never said nothing negative to me, negative to me in any kind of way, shape, or form. So when he put him a blast saying he was a bad person, he sent all his people to come after him. You know, I, I was like, whoa, what's going on with this? But then I seen a pattern because he had already done that to, I believe, Chris, Chris Iris from Venomous Fringe, uh, that he said he was a bad person. So the way I see it, you know, I can understand if it's one individual you've done this, this to. But you've done it to a lot of individuals, and now I guess I'm your target, spiritual Abe. You know, you're making a fun about a love foundation. You know, you're making fun about forgiving. And, you know, I'm telling you right now, you have a lot of hatred and a lot of anger in your heart, bro. You know, you have to you have to let it go. I mean, well, I don't know. I've never really done nothing to you, but told you the truth about forgiving people, about maintaining the love foundation. Not to have hatred in your heart. And you do the opposite. You continue to do the opposite, you know. Uh, and now you want to make, you calling me a spiritual girl. I guess you could say, you know, that's a, to me when you say I'm a spiritual girl, that's like a compliment. Because I do have many, many spiritual abilities. I, I really do. I mean, I could help you. I could help you get that negative attachment off of you. You know, I could really help you. You know, but I don't think you want the help. Because I think you know what path that you're on. But I can get rid of anything, honestly, for, because I've done those works. So when you tell me I'm a spiritual guru, you know, and this is from, you know, from people that I know that are really true friends. When you say I'm a spiritual guru, guru, uh, you know, yeah, I, can, I have many spiritual abilities that I've gained over the years. And I could do many things in a positive way with the Love Foundation. And I think that's the problem you might have with me. Is that in my experience overcame a an unseen force, spiritual unseen force with the Love Foundation. I overcame that, and I'm still here, healthy, healthy. Uh, and that's that's the problem you have with me when I tell you you have to forgive. I said, I, said, I told you one time, forgive Brother Michael Vick, forgive Chris Cyrus, forgive Michael Moran. And I'm telling you to forgive all these individuals because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ and you refuse to forgive. So this is my question to you. How do you expect God to forgive you for your sins if you can forgive others that are here right now? That you say have done something bad to you. I've never done nothing bad to you for you to have me in your mouth. I've, I've never done nothing bad to you. The, the only thing I've ever uh, 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 I've talked to you is Try to talk to you through messenger, giving you spiritual advice. That's about it. And even then, when I was giving you spiritual advice, you would still say th bad things about me. Giving you spiritual advice. Maybe that's not who you are. You know, maybe what you are is, you're not a bad person. You're not a bad person. You haven't seen bad. I've seen bad. I've seen where I've been. I've seen bad. So I don't consider you a bad person. I don't consider you, consider you a threat at all. That's the thing. I don't consider you in that way. 
I'm, I'm just thinking that you have to let go of those negative attachments. Forgive. That's the key. The question is that I, I got a challenge for you. This is a challenge I got for you. Can you truly forgive these individuals? That's my challenge to you. Truly forgive and not talk bad about it no more. Whether it be the individuals that I'm talking about or anybody's coming in a negative way or even me. Because I haven't said nothing bad to you or I've never, never said nothing a bad, bad attention to you. Uh, can you forgive? Can you forgive? And that's a challenge to you. Can you forgive? You know, when you tell, tell me that I have to choose sides between individuals, those individuals and, and some of them I knew them because they're my friends, but I really didn't know them. I knew Mr. Vic Connor because of the show. I knew Brother Michael because he is my friend. Uh, when you, you make me choose and I know you, but I really don't know you and you want me to choose between them and you, you know, I'm neutral. So just because I was neutral, you unfriended me and all this stuff. So I don't know how you could say, kick me out of your groups. Kick me out of your groups. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't know how you want to take credit for something that I've done, something that I'm doing and you want to take credit now. How? How is that possible? If you've never done nothing for me. How? Have you ever invited me to your podcast? If you would invite me after what I've seen, how you are as an individual, I don't want to be on your podcast. If, I'm glad that you, you show me your true colors of who you are, because I wouldn't want to go on your podcast at all. And that's why I'm glad you show me your true colors. You know, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, but you got so many, so many people you've come up against in a negative way. And, and I'm one of them now for some reason. Spiritual aid, making fun of, of a love foundation, you know, making fun of me as an individual. But you know what? All I know is God is protects me and God forbid, God forbid you end up getting sick again with the COVID because maybe, you know, I believe God, uh, what God does is he keeps us here in this world. If we have a purpose. Right, and we're doing his his works, right. So you got to be careful there of what you say, and you got to be careful if you're doing his works because it can come back at you seven times fold. That's all I got to say. You can come back at you seven times fold, and maybe you might have survived this time, but maybe you might not next time. That's what I'm saying. That's why I try to do good works. But yeah, I don't know what is it. Why you you dislike me so much? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know, really know you, man. The only thing is uh, I try to help you out spiritually. Tell you to forgive these individuals. They forgave you for coming at them in a negative way. They don't forgive you a long time ago because I spoke to them. I spoke to, especially Michael, he don't forgive you a long time ago, but you're still on the same path. And then you got uh, other people under you doing the same things you're doing, being shady, uh, doing bad things, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, but all, all I gotta say is I'm just talking for who I am as an individual. Yeah, you can make fun of my spirituality all you want to. Uh, you haven't been where I've been. I've been in combat. I'm a spiritual person. You can't be me. You will never be me. Uh, I am who I am, whether you like it or not. You know, uh, I don't have to surround myself around people to know my capabilities and what I'm capable of doing, whether it be spiritual or physically. You have to surround yourself around people because you need that backup because you don't know uh, what you're capable of doing. You don't know what you're capable of doing. So you got to have a little crowd to show you up. Even though you sound, you sound dumb of what you're saying, you get your little followers to show you up and, uh, and applaud you. To applaud you when you sound dumb, you know, it's ridiculous. And there's no more, I mean, honestly, I had nothing against you, but I don't respect you as an individual because how you are, you know, especially when you got my name in your mouth. You know, you got my name in your mouth. I live in Temple, Texas. I don't live that far away from, uh, from uh, Austin. You, you got a problem with me? Come talk to me about it. We'll discuss it like, like, like men. We can talk about it. You know, I want to know what your problem was with me. I never done nothing to you, man. 
We can talk like men. Just me and you. Me and you, and that's it. We can talk about it. I don't know what your problem is with me. I've never done nothing to you. But you, you won't, you won't come and talk to me, man. You just rather make fun of people. That is just your courage. You like making fun of people, thinking you're a comedian, or want to be comedian. Uh, just that's how you are, man. I mean, I, I can't change you, change you for who you are. You know, sometimes the things that you say are kind of funny. They are kind of funny when you're not making fun of people. But once you start making fun of people, it just messes up the the the, the comedy skit. You know, I used to I used to watch you, man. I used to follow you, bro. I used to follow you on uh, on YouTube. Do you start talking bad about people? You know, I can't be around that kind of stuff when you're talking bad about people. You know, making fun of them, just like you're, you're trying to make fun of me now. You know, it's like what the <laughs> what I would done to this guy. I mean, it's not my my problem. You're overweight. You know, it ain't my problem. You're having your health issues. It ain't my problem what you're going through. For you to be taken out on me, if you want to take out on somebody, take look in the mirror, take it out on yourself, you know. But keep your, keep my, my my name out of your mouth, you know, because you you have nothing to do with me. Yes, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of a lot of people in this world wherever he's going. Uh, there's a lot of and this people in this world that are some evil people. I call them uh, uh, wolves and, and sheep. Cheap clothing, you know, they, they portray to be a certain way, but th that's what they're about, you know. They're, they're not man enough to tell you in your face or to uh, to contact you to tell you what the problem was. They're, they're rather uh, come at you in a negative way. I don't know. I, I'm thinking, I don't know. And, and he's doing it, he's doing this in the week. You know, he already been doing things, but in the week that I did my podcast uh, with my sister. On, on, I mean, we did the season three episode. He's coming at me on the week that I did this. I'm thinking it's because this is what I'm thinking. I've had a lot of positive results, comments from people. I think it's because the episode me and my sister did blew the first episode out of the water. I mean, big time. And I think that's why the problem is right now that he's got a problem with me. Because his episode didn't make no sense. You know, and I have had uh, numerous people... Tell me that it didn't make no sense. Uh, there's a lot of red flags. So I'm thinking that's why he's upset. Uh, that, uh, but hey, I don't know. I'm not trying to compete again. I just share my story, you know, whoever liked it, liked it. And, and that's about it, you know. And I move on forward. You know, as, as a matter of fact, there's already people contact me that, that want to continue to do podcasts and all, all other kind of sides for me from different aspects out of, besides the cryptid, besides the supernatural. Other aspects. So I'm going to continue to be a busy person, uh, but I'm just making this video to say, Josh Turner, please change your ways. Stop making fun of me or other people. And for the people that are following you, they laugh about it. You know, that's your puppets or they become the same as you. You know, I think you all are, are a joke. Uh, like I said, I don't think you're you're man enough man enough to come and talk to me face to face here uh where i live you're not man enough by yourself you always have to get uh, uh get something you know i, I want to talk because i want to get down to the bottom of why you, you you're talking bad about me i haven't done nothing to you man if i've done something bad to you tell me what it is you can come tell me in person what what the problem is that you have with me uh, but like I said, crying wolf. Then it's gonna be your nick nickname, man. Crying wolf. I was crying about something. But anyways, sorry, uh, brother and sister, here on spiritual that come to the counter. This is something I had to vent about because uh, you know I don't like people talking whether they're talking about me bad or whether they're talking about an individual bad. I think I consider these people bullies. Uh, and then you'd have to be dealt with, you know, and that's why I'm, I made this video to call out the, this individual that's been doing this for a while now. And I'm just here to let him know that I'm not afraid of him, uh, that I'm man enough to talk to him person to person. Uh, whether he want, he's man enough or not, I don't know, but I don't think he is. 
uh, that is willing to talk to me person to person. Uh, I never really said nothing bad about this guy ever. You know, I've heard people talk bad about him, but that's, that's, that's on them. Um, but what does he expect when he's crying all the time about individuals that we're talking bad about stuff about individuals? Some of the people that I mentioned it and talk bad about me when I've never done nothing to this guy, you know, I think he does a crying, crying wolf for viewers. So people can feel sorry for him or something. I don't know. I don't know if he didn't have that, uh, something, something wrong with this guy. You know, definitely something wrong with him. Something happened to him. I'm thinking, you know, I don't know if he was on a bad road or, or what, but somewhere within him, he's, he's got some insecurities where he wants people to feel sorry for him for some reason, you know, it, 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 it like he needs care. I don't know. He knows what love is. Honestly, I really don't think he knows what love is. Even though he's married, I don't think he knows what love is. He really don't know. He's confused. He's a confused, confused individual. You know, and uh, I hope he gets some help. You know, I really do. He needs to know what, what the real true love is. And whoever's caught up in, in that, you know, uh, you might need to re reevaluate things because I don't think he knows what love is. He really doesn't know what love is. And I'll pray. I continue to keep my prayers for him so he can change his ways. And hopefully he'll find out what the meaning of, of true love is. And true, and true love, you don't make fun of your brothers and sisters. You don't ridicule brothers and sisters. Huh? You don't ridicule them like that. That's, that's not nothing I'm dealing with love. But in saying that, everybody have a beautiful evening. God bless every single one of y'all. Peace.